ESPN welcomes you to the following presentation of the Southeastern Conference. And welcome everybody to Jordan Hare Stadium, 46th meeting all time between Ole Miss and Auburn. Few have been as important as this one. They're both ranked for just the third time in series history and this one with major implications in the SEC West. These two teams along with Alabama, the one loss teams in the division right now and it's Auburn in control of its destiny in the SEC West. They've yet to play the Rebels, the Tide or the two loss Texas A&M Aggie. Sean McDonough, Todd Blackledge and Molly McGrath just about ready for kickoff. Ole Miss won the toss and deferred. Auburn elected to receive the kickoff from Caden Costa. And here's Nehemiah Pritchett, who does not reach the 20. Chopped down at the 18-yard line. So here's Bo Nix making his 32nd career start. But earlier in the season, second half of the game against Georgia State, he was benched. T.J. Finley led them back to victory. And Todd, he certainly responded the way coaches would want a quarterback who had been benched to respond, playing some of his best football lately, including their last game two weeks ago against Arkansas. That's the best that I've ever seen Bo Nix play against Arkansas. And he's been playing with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. And I think that's why he's playing his best, still competing every day. Tank Bigsby, the running back, they come out throwing and they dump it off to the powerful sophomore. Who's out to the 25-yard line. He's part of a three running back rotation. Both teams regularly use three running backs. Nick's a junior from Pinson, Alabama. And they will play with a fullback. It's John Samuel Schenker, who's a tight end, who lines up in front of Bigsby. He has the first down, bulls his way across the 35-yard line. Down on the field, Molly McGrath. Well, Sean, Bo Nix told me he's glad that he was benched. He said it completely changed him and reignited his competitive fire. He said he was playing it safe, trying to be perfect, and lost his intensity. But he has that killer instinct back, and he's never felt more confident in his career. And he knows it'll take a special performance to win tonight, saying he's ready to match their offensive firepower and make this game a shootout if it comes to it, Sean. Two quarterbacks with similarities, Bo Nix and Matt Corral. Both can hurt you with passing and running on target. To Xavier Capers, just his fifth catch of the season. Good for a first down out near midfield. Nice job by the offensive line. Ole Miss brought a little pressure that time. Five-man rush, everybody picked up. Nice clean pocket for Bo Nix to throw the football down the field. Gain of 13 on the completion of the sophomore Capers. Jarquez Hunter, freshman in it, running back now. He has a hole. And he's powerful at 202 pounds. A.J. Finley, junior free safety. Made the tackle for Ole Miss. It's an improving defense for the Rebels in year two under... Lane Keffen with D.J. Durkin as the coordinator. They held LSU to 17 points in a home win last week in Oxford as they beat the Tigers on Eli Manning Day. Jarquez Hunter slipped on this absolutely perfect grass field as he tried to make a cut. Chance Campbell nearby for the Ole Miss defense. A little momentum for Auburn to start this drive. Now the first big third down play of the ball game, third and eight. Right around midfield for the Tigers. Bo Nix told us he had hurt his shoulder prior to that Georgia State game. Didn't prepare as well as he should have. Spent a lot of time rehabbing that shoulder. Had no problem with being benched. He's fully healthy now. The son of a coach. He's in trouble. And this is what he can do. And Matt Corral as well. They'll be fun to watch all night long. He for the first down marker and it looks like he came up about a yard short Dean Leonard chased him to the stick it was Sam Williams one of the leading sack men in the country who had the original pressure well Sam Williams just beat the right tackle It was only a three-man rush but again credit Bo Nix this is what he does has a great feel for how to escape the pocket and extend plays but just a hair short and it looks like Auburn Gonna line up and go for it on the other side. 
of the 50-yard line. Under first-year head coach Brian Harson here after a successful seven-year run at Boise State. Straight ahead. First down for Tank Bigsby. This is the way I think Auburn is going to challenge Ole Miss. Ole Miss is not very big on defense. They play three down linemen, two linebackers, and six defensive backs. And Auburn, even though they haven't run the ball this year consistently the way they've done in the past, they still are bigger and more physical, and they want to try to establish that. A lot of two tight ends already in this opening possession. They had the tight end Shanker in the game. They had him split out to the right. Good throw. Knicks on target. Kobe Hudson. First down at the 23 yard line. Tonight's impact players brought to you by Chick fil A. Well, Tank Bigsby, we've seen him already catching the ball and running it on defense. Otis Reese and Chance Campbell, two guys that transferred into this Ole Miss program, have made a big difference for this defense. Here are the leading tacklers on the team. Campbell the leader, Reese number two. Bigsby turns the corner, lowers the shoulder, and has a first down. Well, right now, this is a physical game. Auburn winning at the line of scrimmage. Bigsby doing a nice job being patient. He likes to bounce it out. They wanted to get a little bit more north-south running, but he's doing that in this possession. And a great first drive here for the Auburn Tiger offense. Bigsby's already had three 100-yard rushing games this season. The Tigers are 5-2. and two. Hunter stacked up after a gain of one. The only losses for Auburn at Penn State. And Brian Harson really frustrated that they lost their 28-20. Felt they should have won the game, had chances to do it. And the other loss was back on October 9th here to the number one team in the yep. country, Georgia. And Coach Harson felt they played better than the 34 to 10 score would indicate. Well, I think the key is they have definitely improved as a team since that Penn State loss. And you can see it on the field and on tape on both sides of the ball. Hard-nosed team under Harson. They spent a lot of time on old-fashioned fundamentals. They have a hard-nosed quarterback who's in the end zone. Bo Nix caps the opening drive for the Tigers. Luke Deal, the tight end, is going to get the key block. Beautiful job. Helping open the door for the 11-yard touchdown run by Bo Nix. Anders Carlson on for the extra point. Senior kicker out of Colorado Springs right down the middle. And an impressive opening drive. They went 82 yards in 11 plays. Well, they did a great job of blocking in with the receivers and then leading out. And Bo Nix, it was a design quarterback run. They seal the edge. Great block by the tight end, Luke Deal. And Bo Nix knows how to find the end zone. Impressive first drive for the Auburn Tigers to take a 7-0 lead. You're watching College Football Primetime presented by Subway. And this is the SEC on ESPN. Temperature in the mid-50s here in the loveliest village on the plains, Auburn, Alabama. Anders Carlson kicking off into that light breeze at five miles per hour. Returnable for Jerry and Ely. He's out across the 25-yard line. Well, here comes the high-scoring Ole Miss attack led by Matt Corral. 24 total touchdowns, rushing and passing, eighth most in the country. His QBR of 87 he is fourth best in the country. C.J. Stroud, Bryce Young, Kenny Pickett ahead of him. And how about that touchdown interception ratio of 15 to 1? Tied for third best in the country. Only Jack Plummer, Purdue, and Kenny Pickett better entering today's action. Yeah, that's a big area of improvement. He threw 14 interceptions a year ago. Both these teams have been very good at avoiding turnovers on first down. It's Jerry and Ely dumped by Marcus Harris. 
behind the line of scrimmage. And one of Lane Kiffin's concerns entering tonight, the middle of his offensive line, the center and guards where they've battled some injuries against that excellent middle of the defensive line for Auburn. We'll see a lot of runs outside, including that one. Ontario Drummond on the end around, their leading wide receiver. I think the other thing we'll see, and I think Auburn is fully prepared, is we're going to see a lot of quarterback run because that gets an extra blocker for this Ole Miss offense. Matt Corral, 42 carries last two games. He zings one. Connects on the slant for the first down to Dontario Drummond, senior from Laurel, Mississippi. His 37th catch of the year. That's twice as many as anybody else on the team. And they will go very quickly. They average 79 plays per game. Fourth most in the country. They snap it every 21 seconds. Drummond went in motion. Corral. Tried to get it to Ely, running back. Kobe McLean in coverage. And Lane Kiffin told us, Todd, I thought when the season started, we had the best group of three wide receivers, yep. maybe individually not the best, but as a group, Mingo and Sanders, along with Drummond, would be the best. And Ben Brown, a stalwart at right guard, 40 straight starts out after bicep surgery. Snoop Connor part of that rotation at running back Corral right on target again. Jacor Pearson the first down into Auburn territory to the 44 yard line a gain of 12. I think that's the best throw that Matt Corral makes is the slant route. He is incredibly accurate on that throw. Most accurate passer in Ole Miss history 67 percent career on target again. Drummond down to the 32 for 12 more and the Rebels in the blink of an eye to the Tiger 32. One thing Molly found out before the game, we may see Braylon Sanders in the red zone. On the run, Snoop Connor to the 29. Sanders did not play last week in their game against LSU. He's been bothered by a hamstring, which he injured in their win at Tennessee. They were hoping he could play. They acknowledged if he did, it would be limited and apparently red zone only. Is what Molly has learned from the Rebel sideline. After the play fake on target again. First down inside the 10. It's the tight end Casey Kelly with his sixth catch of the year. That was the brother of Chad Kelly, the former Ole Miss quarterback. They spot it on the 10. Snoop Connor tackled by Tony Fair, defensive lineman. Number 90, right in the middle of that Auburn front. Well, Braylon Sanders into the lineup now for the first time. They are in the red zone on the nine yard line. He's at the top of the screen right there, number 13. Let's see if he's used as a decoy on this play or a targeted receiver. Henry Parrish, the running back. He's an excellent receiver, second on the team in receptions. And they send him out into a pass pattern. Corral checks it down and it's dropped by Don Terrio Drummond. It was a good throw. I think Drummond was just kind of turning, getting ready to turn his head to see if he could get it into the end zone and lost his concentration. But that was a catchable pass by Matt Corral. You always have to be aware of quarterback draw, too, on this third down play. And Lane Kiffin, as we know, is not opposed to going for a lot of fourth down plays either. They've gone for it on fourth down more than any team in the country. Leans heavily on the analytics. Play clock at five. Play clock at one. Design rollout for Corral. He's in trouble and chopped down behind the line of scrimmage by Zacoby McLean. So Kobe McLean, one of their leaders on the defense. Here he is right here. He's just going to kind of mirror the quarterback. And as soon as he sees Corral try to start to run, he's going to attack. Well done. He waited. He was patient and attacked at the right time. Caden Costa, true freshman from Mandeville, Louisiana, has had an excellent freshman season, seven out of nine. 29-yard try from just inside the right hash mark. And it is good. 
So each team has scored on its opening possession. We've already seen the talents of these two dual threat quarterbacks on display. Nicks the 11 yard score for the Auburn touchdown. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by the Eat Fresh Refresh at Subway and in part by Lexus. Experience amazing. It's already been a big football weekend here in Auburn, Alabama. Last night, Auburn High School hosted National Powerhouse IMG Academy. You saw Mike Bobo, the offensive coordinator, head coach Brian Harson there. Their sons both play for Auburn High School. Davis Harson's the backup quarterback. And Drew Bobo, the starting left tackle, he's already committed yep. to play for Auburn next year. They gave IMG a game. They were ahead yep. in the fourth quarter. IMG scored two late touchdowns. There's Mike Bobo in the middle, 127-17. Yeah, I talked to Brian Harson before the game. He said they really played well. They just couldn't finish it at the end. Sean Shivers took the Caden Costa kickoff. Back to the... 30 yard line. There anyway, we welcome you in the booth, Sean McDonough and Todd Blackledge. Delighted to have you with us. I think we've already had a glimpse of yeah. what we expect tonight. These two teams likely to go up and down the field, led by dynamic quarterbacks. In the case of Matt Corral, Lane Kiffin still optimistic that he yeah. could remain a Heisman Trophy contender. Well, I think he can. I mean, to me, I think November is when it really matters, and he still has big games ahead of him. He's certainly putting up those kind of numbers, even though he's missing some of his best weapons out on the outside. Tank Bigsby, the running back here for Auburn. Big hole, big run. Big man in the Rebel territory to the 46-yard line. A.J. Finley finally able to run him down. It's a first down. Watch the cut. It starts left. He plants the left foot back to the right side of the formation. A little bit of over pursuit by the Ole Miss defense and a big time run for Tank Bigsby. He has that ability to plant his foot and change directions and make people miss. 26 yard gain. He had a big game against the Rebels last year in Oxford in a seven point win. He banged his way inside the 40. Ashanti Sistrunk made the tackle, 129 yards at Ole Miss last year. They keep their backs fresh. Ole Miss does the same thing. Both these teams will play three running backs. Of course, their running back coach is a pretty good running back himself, Carnell Cadillac Williams, the running back coach for Auburn. He wasn't bad. No, not too bad. He and Ronnie Brown, quite a combo themselves. Ole Miss rush five in the pass in the flat is dropped by Jarquez Hunter. Freshman from Philadelphia, Mississippi. There's Parnell right there. Great nickname, Cadillac. He and Ronnie Brown, right? that was as good of a one-two combination of running backs that college football has seen in a long time. Great play. Hunter again, and a first down to the 33-yard line. Chance Campbell to stop for Ole Miss. That's what they like about the freshman Hunter. He is the north-south downhill runner. Runs behind his pads. He ran right through a tackle of Chase Campbell, the leading tackle on this Ole Miss defense. Showed some physicality on that run. Hunter has averaged 8.6 yards per carry to this point of the season. They line up the tight end, Shanker, as a fullback. Boy, he's got the other tight end. And unfortunately for Auburn, it needed to be a diving catch by Luke Deal, where there was more in that play for them as he was wide open. He goes to the 18. He's going to go right down here. A little miscommunication because everybody's rushing the quarterback. They leave that area void, and Bo Nix just kind of underthrew the ball, or it would have been a touchdown. Sixth catch of the year for Deal. They play four different tight ends. All can catch the ball. Bigsby back in. And he slides ahead for about two. You know, it's interesting. We're seeing Schenker lined up as a fullback. When we talked to Mike Bobo yesterday, he said, you know, 
Brian Harson and I, we don't know each other great, but we kind of have the same philosophy about offensive football, and playing with a fullback's okay sometimes, you know? They both want to be physical, they want to run the football, and Schenker has that versatility to line up in different spots, in this case, a fullback or an H-back. Now attaches to the left end of the line with three wide receivers, and Bigsby running right. He got rocked as he crossed the line of scrimmage. Sam Williams at the bottom of the pile, one of the best in the country, senior from right down the road in Montgomery, Alabama. A really good play by Williams. I mean, we know he can rush the passer. He's their best pure pass rusher. That time he fought off the block, used his hands well, and met the ball carrier right at the point of attack. Second in the SEC in sacks behind Will Anderson of Alabama, who has eight and a half. Third and seven, they're in field goal range at the very least as we approach three minutes to go in the opening quarter. The fade and a flag thrown. Ball went over the head of Landon King, one of those tight ends, but it might have been intended for Shedrick Jackson, who seemed to be the player who was impeded. Ken Williamson leading our SEC officiating crew. Now, I think they're going to call it on the defender who was on Landon King. My only question is this ball, Landon King doesn't look like he's running anywhere near the ball's going to be. He looks like he's running oh inside. The ball's thrown way outside. Yes, there was contact, but I don't know that that's even going to be close to being a caught football. Doesn't look like a lot there either. It's the same old story for Ole Miss, the most penalized team in the country at more than 10 per game. Only UAB has endured more penalty yards per game. Bigsby stumbling. Stayed on his feet long enough to turn it into a gain of two to the four-yard line where he's run down by Sam Williams. Really good hustle play by Sam Williams, but he's the one getting up slow at the end of that play. One of the key defenders on this Ole Miss defense. Williams still being tended to. And we'll step aside with 2.40 to go in the first quarter, and Auburn leading 7-3. to three. Don't forget to check out the Great Clips Command Center. The broadcast of this game. That's what it looks like if you go there on ESPN 3 and the ESPN app. It's streaming right now. All kinds of statistical information. Split screen. You'll get the constant sky cam view. That is the vantage point from the AT&T 5G sky cam. We're going to watch this play from the AT&T 5G sky cam. Second and goal. Sam Williams walked off the field. They're at the four-yard line. Auburn already up seven to three. Bigsby lowers his head again and goes down near the one. Rebels diving into the pile as if they thought the ball might have come out. And Chance Campbell at the bottom of the pile again for Ole Miss. He'll be there all night long. We've seen mostly 12 personnel for Auburn, which is one back, two tight ends. That was 13 personnel with three tight ends and one back. This is heavy personnel now. Sam Williams back in. The ball did come out. That's why you saw a couple of Ole Miss players yeah, diving there in. Is. There it is on the ground. And it was John Samuel Schenker able to recover it for Auburn. So a big break for the Tigers. Use a timeout. Auburn's lost only five turnovers this season tied for fourth fewest in the country one of the teams with which they are tied is Ole Miss which has also turned it over only five times Coastal Carolina Michigan and Toledo and that was entering today Michigan had problems with 
turnovers today, the only ones that had fewer. Well, Auburn running the football. I mentioned the two tight ends. They're doing a great job. Luke Deal and John Samuel Shanker. This was the Bo Nix touchdown. Again, both tight ends involved in the blocking schemes. Coming into the game, Auburn averaging 196 yards a game rushing, but against SEC opponents, that number has been way down. Off to a very good start, kind of asserting their physicality at the line of scrimmage against this Ole Miss defense so far tonight. We have Austin Troxel back starting at left tackle. He did not start last week due to injury, their last game. Up and over and in. Tank Bigsby with the second Auburn touchdown of the night. Bigsby's seventh rushing touchdown of the season. They've scored a touchdown on each of their two drives. Has to be disappointing to Ole Miss, which came here feeling like the defense was much improved in recent weeks. Whistles stopped the play before the extra point. It took too long to get the extra point off. To the dismay of Brian Harson. You know, I think it's worth mentioning because it looks this way to me. Auburn coming off a bye week. After the win against Arkansas on the road, it was a noon game. They've had the week off to get healthy, get refreshed. Ole Miss coming off a tough rivalry game with LSU, and Auburn appears to be the fresher team, at least early on. Extra point is good. We mentioned the multiple tight ends. Take a look at this touchdown play. One tight end, two tight end, three tight end, and then this guy right here is J.J. Pegues, who's a defensive lineman that they put in there. Another big body. And Tank Bigsby over the top for the touchdown. So Auburn feeling like they could establish the line of scrimmage. They're bigger, they're more physical, and it's paying off for them right now with the run game and a 14-3 lead. Ten plays, 71 yards. Bigsby was the SEC freshman of the year last year when he rushed for 834 yards. The only freshman who ever ran for more for Auburn, James Bostic. He ran for more, did Big B as a freshman, yeah. than Bo Jackson in his first year. I, I like Big B. I watched him when we did the Penn State game earlier. I watched the Penn State-Auburn game. He had 102 yards and two touchdowns against a very good Penn State defense on the road. Really the biggest reason why Auburn had a great chance to win that game. I should correct myself, it was Michael Dyer who had more rushing yards as an Auburn freshman. The six yards per carry for Bigsby last year, the first player to do that for Auburn since Bostic in 1993. Carlson's kickoff will be a touchback. Let's check in back in the studio. Here's Matt Barry. Houston team lost their opener to Texas Tech, and they've won every game since. And they are playing good football. Some very good teams in the American. Play fake by Corral. His pass is deflected in the air, caught by an offensive him. lineman. And Corral's the center, hurt. Corral Umana is hurt. caught it, and Corral's hurt. He injured his right ankle against Tennessee. He carried the ball 30 times. He's holding his left ankle right now. And more than anything else, the status of Matt Corral is the issue for Lane Kiffin. Smoke Monday, yep. the safety 
deflected the pass. You wonder if it was right here. Yeah, I think that's where he heard it right there. Yeah, twisted it awkwardly, trying to get away. Derek Hall was the guy putting the pressure on. Luke Altmeyer is the backup quarterback who's played very little, and Corral was in a lot of pain. You mentioned the Tennessee game. He ran the ball 30 times for 195 yards, just showed great courage and toughness, and came out of that game with an injured right ankle. He was not 100% last week against LSU, but he played, and he actually ran the ball 12 more times in that game. They got him out when the game was in hand, but now this looks like a much more significant injury for Matt Corral. Well, that was a remarkable performance at Tennessee on October 16th. 30 carries for 195 yards in their five-point win. And he did not turn down any contact. That was the most carries in a game by an Ole Miss player since 2007 when the running back Ben Jarvis Green Ellis had 33 totes against Mizzou. And the Auburn coaches told us tonight they anticipated Corral would carry between 25 and 35 times. Yeah, we haven't seen the designed run for Matt Corral yet. We've seen a couple scrambles, but they've been in tune and in position to make plays. But this does not look good for Matt Corral or Lane Kiffin. I mean, his quarterback has been a warrior. He's played great. But Derek Hall, who was pressuring from his defensive end position, mm. kind of rolled up on that left ankle. And you can see Matt Corral is in a lot of pain. What a shame. Such a competitor. It was refreshing to hear Lane Kiffin speak so honestly about the Heisman Trophy. He said, you know, I feel terrible for Corral because he's without a couple of his best receivers. We're without one of our best tight ends, one of our best offensive linemen. It's really hard for him to put up the kind of numbers that he needs to to win the Heisman. And Lane said, I think he deserves it. And it would be great for Ole Miss as well, obviously. They've never had a Heisman Trophy winner. So here's Luke Altmeyer. Freshman from Starkville, home of their arch rival Mississippi State, is 0 for 4, throwing collegiate passes. And a bizarre play to be welcomed to this one. He got blasted at the 22 after a rather slow weave toward the line of scrimmage. Smoke Monday smoked him. It was supposed to be a quick throw. Probably Lane just wanted to get his new quarterback settled, but nobody was open, and he decided to take off and took a shot at the end of the play. Well, say sometimes the uh, quarterbacks, it helps to take a hit early on. Swing pass, Ely dropped for another loss by Owen Papo. One of their best players missed a lot of time this season due to injury. And the expression on Lane Kiffin's face, Todd, said it all. He knows they are in big trouble if yep. Corral cannot return. Well, Owen Papo has not played for a while. Watch how quick and the perfect angle to Ely. Because Ely can really run. He's got the most speed of all the backs. But a perfect angle to the tackle by Owen Papo. And Ole Miss went backwards without their starting quarterback and has to punt. Matt Brown is 46th game as the Ole Miss punter. Low line drive taken on a hop by Demetrius Robertson. And well covered by Ole Miss. 42 yard punt, zero on the return. And another injured Ole Miss player on the punt play as we look again at the injury. He was hurt before he threw that football. The ball was tipped. But right there is where he hurt the ankle, and then he just tried to get rid of the football. Fourth year junior from Ventura, California, Matt Corral. You know, we haven't seen it yet as we're, they're tending to the Ole Miss player. Jalen Jordan. For Auburn, they've got Ole Miss on the ropes right now, particularly not knowing the status of Matt Corral. This is a perfect opportunity 
for Mike Bobo to call a play action and try to take a deep shot and see if they can really take advantage of the takeaway. Lane, Lane Kiffin is distraught, I think, more than anything for his quarterback. Well, they're he, so close. Yep. And he has such appreciation for what a hard worker, what a gritty competitor, what a talented player Corral is. He really believes he could be a Heisman Trophy winner, perhaps should be the Heisman Trophy winner if he had, as we said, kind of an even playing field, but yeah. playing without good players around him, and now he might not be able to play either. Well, especially when so much of what he does is extend plays with his feet, make runs. How much could he possibly do with that, even if he comes back in the game? Final 10 seconds of the opening quarter. Knicks look like a design run from the beginning, and he slides down with a two-yard loss with Tylen Knight approaching rapidly. And that takes us to the end of the first quarter. Auburn scored on both of its drives in the first quarter, had 142 yards of offense. Altmeyer in the spotlight as we go to the second quarter. You saw Matt Corral's invisible pain with apparent left ankle injury. He tried to get on an exercise bike after leaving the tent. Medical training staff insisted that he go back to the locker room for an x-ray first. I'm told he is questionable to return, so we could see Matt Corral back in this game, Sean. Well, the good thing is, as he got on the car, it didn't look to be in the same kind of pain yeah. anywhere near it that he was when the injury first happened, and he was limping slightly. Well, here comes Auburn right out of the huddle, the line of scrimmage. Second and 12, opening play of the second quarter. The Tigers leading 14 to 3, and it's Sean Shivers, the ball carrier. A big play right here for the Ole Miss defense if they can get a three and out. And Auburn, I think, kind of did them a favor because they went away from the power running. DJ Durkin, the defensive coordinator, having trouble stopping that run. A couple spread out plays, and uh, they defended those plays better. Alien Zierer now in at left tackle. Made his first career start last week and did well. Knicks in trouble. He got away from Williams. Now Campbell in hot pursuit. Bo Nix did well to hang on to the ball. And actually that worked out better for the Rebels as he kept retreating and wound up back near the 31-yard line. Here's Williams now, Brodarius Ham, their right tackle. He's been their best offensive lineman. That's the second time in the ball game that Williams has gone right around him. Campbell was the second guy there, and Williams on second effort got the takedown out of bounds. So good hustle and effort play by Sam Williams and a nice three and out for the Ole Miss defense. 14 yard loss on the sack. Ole Miss is a beautiful punt here by Oscar Chapman. And it rolls out of bounds at the 13. Ole Miss has had five sacks in each of the last two games. First time that's happened in consecutive games since 1999. Well, here comes Altmeyer for his first full series. We'll remind you that Tuesday, here it comes. The first exclusive reveal of the college football playoff top 25 rankings. Recent the guys will break them down from top to bottom. Have reaction from coaches, a live interview with the committee chairman, Gary Barta, the athletic director at the University of Iowa. That's at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, on ESPN and the ESPN app. Well, Luke Altmeyer, who had appeared in three games briefly prior to tonight, flips it forward to Dontario Drummond. Up he goes and down at the 15 yard line, upended by Jalen Simpson. The cornerback for Auburn. Well, you wonder, would Auburn try to pressure the new quarterback? Derek Mason's defense is not a big, heavy pressure team. Conservative play calls here, understandably so. Henry Parrish ahead, and it looks like he has enough for the Rebels' first down to the 22. Conservative, but remember, this is the best running football team in the SEC coming in, averaging 263 yards a game. Now, Matt Corral, a big part of that running offense, but they are a run-first football team, even with a Heisman candidate, Matt Corral. 61% of their plays are runs. 
Here's a play action pass for Altmaier. He pulls it down. Get out of bounds. And uh, he got hit right at the sideline. Derek Hall. I think next time Altmaier will make sure he gets a little more briskly to the sideline for offensive coordinator Jeff Lebby, who calls the plays with input from Lane Kiffin. Usually between series, they don't really have a lot of time for a conversation between plays because of the pace at which they operate. Henry Parrish to the 38 and another Ole Miss first down. Again, this is good for Ole Miss to establish their ground game. Matt Corral, I mean, he's moving much better. Again, how much can he do in terms of running, moving in the pocket, extending plays? But he looks a lot different than he did when he first got he up. He looks off like the a field. man determined to come yes. back into the game. Snoop Connor. Nice run, looked like it'd be a loss. Instead, he weaved his way out to the 44-yard line. That has the expression, put me back in the game. Second and five, 14 to three Auburn. Early in the second quarter, there's the first completion of his college career for Altmaier. A second completion now. John Rice Plumley, who was once a quarterback himself on the receiving end of that play. Yeah, we wondered during the break if they might go to him at quarterback, but he doesn't really see reps in practice much at quarterback. A deflection off one Rebel, and it's caught by Jacor Pearson. Off the hands of Casey Kelly, the tight end, and into the hands of Pearson. Yeah, normally, if a ball gets tipped like that, something bad happens. If you're a quarterback, that time it was a fortuitous bounce. How about this drive? Altmaier looking more confident by the moment. Dumped it off to Casey Kelly, who has another Ole Miss first down. They are briskly on the move. You know, the one thing I wonder, Sean, is is Lane Kiffin going to be as inclined to go for fourth down plays with this quarterback on the field, or is he going to be more conservative, even though he's behind on the scoreboard right now? Well, Corral looks like he is getting ready to come back in. Yep. I don't think they'd be going through all of what we have seen there along their sideline. Out of the pistol. Look out. Altmaier planted back at the 43 by Zacoby McLean. I mentioned Derek Mason, not a heavy pressure guy. This time he brings McLean and isolates him on the running back. And Snoop Connor just does not do a good job picking up the pressure. They had a man there to pick him up, and they weren't able to make the play. Apparently, Corral grabbed the wrong helmet. I think you call timeout if you're Lane Kiffin. If you're going to bring him in the game, call timeout. And I think that's what Lane's going to do as he has started toward the official nearest him, and there it is. You want to get Corral back in as soon as you can. Altmaier performed valiantly, actually five for five now upon entering the game for 18 yards. Did a really nice job. They've thrown only four passes prior to tonight. Three of them are against Austin P in his most significant action. The other one at Tennessee. You know, when we talked to Jeff Levy, the offensive coordinator, he said, in one word, how would you describe Matt Corral? And he said, inspiring. Mm -hmm. He said he's an inspiring guy, the way he goes about his business, the way he works and prepares. And all the guys on our team feed off of that. He's a fierce competitor and has been a great leader of this football team. And Stuff like this just adds to that mm. with his teammates. Inspiring indeed. This is exactly what Coach Lebby had in mind when he used that word. He steps into a second down and 17. 9.59 to go until halftime. And his team down 14 to 3 in a critical game in the SEC West. Moved pretty well to get loose for a deep throw that's too deep for Dontario Drummond. But Jalen Simpson, the cover man. The good thing just physically for Matt Corral is because it's his left ankle that he injured, that's not his plant foot. So his right foot is his plant foot. But that was already injured. Already, but it was about 90% coming into the game. Well, maybe it helps to have both ankles balanced. They both hurt. 
Beautiful throw, and here will come the analytics as Jacor Pearson is down about two yards short of the first down, and no hesitation for Lane. The book says go for it. He's going for it. The book says go, and his main man quarterback is back on the field. But Parrish, the running back, Parrish has the first down. You got to get the ball to Drummond. Somehow they got to find him. Yep. There's Matt Lindsay who carries around the analytics book. Henry Parrish, the ball carrier, and Lane Kiffin said, it'll be easy for you to find my man with the analytics book. Just look for the guy who looks like Andy Reid. <laughs> Matt Lindsay, just in case they need to look at it. Wayne had told us something interesting. He said Lindsay doesn't have to look at the book very much. What he tells Lane at the start of every series when they get a first down, he looks at Lindsay and Lindsay holds up the number of fingers of how many yards they need to be within on fourth down to go for. It. Flag down, high throw in the flat. So Dontario drumming the antenna receiver. So at the start of that play, if Matt Lindsay held up three fingers, that means if it's fourth or three or closer, they'll go for the first down. If not, defense number 29 lined up for the neutral zone. Five yard penalty. Three second down. They'll kick. And, and all that is ever changing because it's based on field position, time in the game, what the score is, all those kind of Your things. Your tendencies, the right. other team's tendencies. He said the book changes every week. It's not like the old two-point chart that everybody right. had. If the score is this, you go for two. If it's that, you don't go for two. He said it, it's a different book every week based on the opponent, the situations, the spot on the field, the score, the time of the game. Snoop Connor stopped just short of the line to make. It'll be third down, less than a yard, eight and a half to go till halftime. Well, I started to say it earlier, Drummond, their leading receiver, has yet to get a catch in the ball game. Snoop Connor has the touchdown. That is his specialty. When they get near the goal line, it's short yardage or goal to go. They lean heavily on Snoop Connor, his 23rd career rushing touchdown in the first of the night for Ole Miss. Well, um, Umana, who started the game as a center, he's at right guard now. Bryce Ramsey's at center. They get a double team right there at the point of attack and open up a big hole for Snoop Connor. Umana is the guy who transferred from Utah, was a starter for the Utes, has played both guard and center. That time did a great job, lined up his right guard. And the extra point, good. That maneuvering along the offensive line made necessary because of the season-ending injury to Ben Brown, their stalwart at right guard. Snoop Connor. Has Ole Miss and Matt Corral back within four. Taco Bell welcomes you to the Live Moss Student Section of the Year contest. Use hashtag student section sauce to get the committee's attention. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. What a drive by Ole Miss like they might have lost their quarterback for at least the rest of the game, if not longer. Not surprisingly, given who he is, he returned and finished the drive. Jarquez Hunter brings back the Caden Costa kickoff and gets clothesline, and here comes the flag at the 34-yard line. Auburn's going to have great field position to start this possession. 8-14 left in the first half. There's another flag, though, back at the 18. There was a flag thrown for this hit at the end of the return for a face mask on Mark Britt. But there might have been a blocking foul earlier. Ken Williamson explaining to Brian Harson what's going on.
All right, Ken. <laughs> Two fouls on the play during return, block in the back, 13 or 47. Personal foul, face mask, kicking team number 14. Auburn has chosen to offset those fouls. We'll re-establish the kickoff. Matt, you want to help us with that? <laughs> yeah, anytime you have uh, basically what we call a post-possession foul, so both of those fouls occur during the return. So there was one on each team. The team in possession has the option to decline the other team's foul and have theirs enforced. So it, by declining the face mask and enforcing their penalty would have given them, them ball, their ball back on about the 10-yard line. So it was much more beneficial for them to replay it down. As always, very well done. Yep by Matt Austin. So Caden Costa will kick off again. How about that drive? 15 plays, 88 yards. It started with Luke Altmeyer, highly recruited out of Starkville, Mississippi. He was on for the first nine plays of the 88 yard drive. Then Corral came in for the last six. And Altmeyer, five for five in the emergency situation tonight. That is a performance that should not be forgotten, regardless of how this game goes. It was important. They're back in the game. Here's Shivers. Taken down at 23. Here's Matt Berry. All right, Matt, thank you. Any reaction to your alma mater being ahead after a rough couple of weeks? Yeah, it has been a rough couple of weeks, but this is a huge game. They typically play well in Columbus on a good start. And it looks like Sean Clifford is closer to 100% than he was a week ago. It's Tank Bigsby again, having a big first half. He's up to 81 yards on 11 carries. Still. Almost eight minutes to go in the half. Auburn back in that 12 personnel set now with the two tight ends. You know, Sean, we, we talked about Bo Nix being benched during the Georgia State game, how tough that was for him, and then the comeback. It should be mentioned also, this Auburn football team that Brian Harson inherited, they lost their top three receivers off of last year's team. Anthony Schwartz, Seth Williams, Eli Stowe, they led in all receptions, they led in touchdowns. The next closest in receptions last year was Tank Bigsby with 11 catches. So they lost their production, and uh, and then they've had trouble handing, holding on to the football this year. 21 drop passes coming into the game tonight. Moving on along the line, flags are down. Looked like Ole Miss was offside. Pass intended for Bigsby. Yeah, those 21 drop passes are the seventh most in the country for Auburn. Offside, defense number 96. Five yard penalty. What result on the first down? Isaiah Eiton. Guilty of the offside, you saw the frustration on the face of D.J. Durkin. This defense this year has done two things really well. They've pressured the quarterback, 23 sacks coming into the game, another one tonight, and they've taken the ball away. 12 takeaways. All day for Bo Nix and a wide open receiver. Demetrius Robertson out of bounds at the 20, Jalen Jones. Made the tackle. You mentioned all the departures at wide receiver, but he's a reinforcement. Robertson, a transfer from Georgia. There's a little combination route. The post route by the outside receiver drew both defenders, and nobody there for Robert Robertson on the outside. Bo Nix found him. 35-yard gain. They're not getting near Nix. Robertson again. Out of bounds. Flag down in the offensive backfield. Yeah, it's going to be roughing the passer. Sam Williams just took a shot at the back of the head of Bo Nix at the end of the play. And again, these penalties, which has been the problem for Ole Miss, even though they've only got one loss, these penalties are critical. And, and, and they add Personal up. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense number one. 
I'm sorry, I said Sam Williams. It was Jake Springer. Jake Springer on the blitz. There's a hit after the ball is thrown. It wasn't a lot, but it was enough, and it was up and near the head area that drew the flag. He's a transfer from Navy. If you're looking for reasons why the defense has improved, he's a big reason why. Yep. He's been hurt, and he got hurt after the opener, missed several games, came back the last couple weeks, and he makes a big difference on their football team. He missed four games, returned for their win at Tennessee. Knicks keeps it. Wide open pass to the end zone. That's his dad, the former Auburn quarterback and Bo's high school coach, Patrick Nix. <laughs> Whose high school team, by the way, is having another great year. He's moved around a bit as Coach Nix, but Central High School, Phoenix City, Alabama, 10 and 0 with Bo's brother, Caleb. That quarterback, Anders Carlson, the extra point. Bo Nix has rushed for two. It's 21-10, Tigers. Acre Restaurant in Auburn, Alabama is one of my all-time favorite spots. It was opened in 2013 by self-taught chef David Bancroft. My feature is redfish on the half shell. Fish was cured with a house-made Creole rub, then placed on the grill, scales down with a lid on it. Partway through the process, he begins to glaze it with a Cajun butter to create and capture a white butter smoke over the fish. Finish it with some Louisiana lamb yap and fried okra, and we are good. Taste of the town, War Eagle, and welcome home. You have enough redfish? <laughs> My it goodness. Was so good. That is a great place. So good. Anders Carlson kicks off. The lead back to 11 for the Tigers. Well, no, I, I didn't hope bring you brought fish. me something. I didn't bring you fish because I thought it might smell up the booth. I did bring you some of the lacquered cornbread, uh, but I don't know what happened to this other lacquered, piece. Lacquered, like they spray. No, no it's it's, honey, on it it's honey butter and hot sauce that he lacquers with it. You okay. got to try some. Right, you want a fork? Oh, good. Yeah, well, it does have a lot get of in there. Get in there after it. Okay. It's obviously better if it's, it's hot be, in the hot skillet. I, was, I think I was going to say, is it it's supposed not, to be cold and hard no, as a hockey just, puck? Just, would you just eat the food that I bring you? Sorry, My sorry. goodness. I don't know if Cody ate that other piece back here, the A2. Of course he did. Or Very unprofessional to call a play. Why don't you do play that play for this okay. play? Okay. Little RPO slant route to the tight end. First What's down. His name? I didn't see who caught it. it has to be Casey, right? It Casey was Casey Kelly, Kelly number 81. That yeah. was excellent. I love redfish. That was the healthiest taste of the town. Yeah. Well, there was also chicken fried bacon on that plate, too. Oh. So just to balance it oh, out. That was delicious. I'm sorry I couldn't go with you to Acre last night. Corral runs forward. At, we do have COVID protocols in yes, place at ESPN. I, I, I know that's why you were outside. Then you were eating by yourself. Correct. Yes, of course. Second and seven. Corral out wide. Miles battle because of the injuries to their wide receiver core. They have moved him over from defensive back. He was a wide receiver, then went to defensive back. Now he's come back to wide receiver. He actually might play on both sides of the ball tonight. He got four, his second catch of the year. Third down and four. Here's Casey Kelly has the first down for Ole Miss. Nice read that time by Matt Corral. That was an RPO. So the line was blocking run. And that's just a decision of Matt Corral to either give the ball to the back or throw the quick throw to the tight end. The right decision, another first down, and Ole Miss on the move again. Corral, after a couple of short passes, trying to pump fake, took the check down and Miles Battle says, Coach, if you don't mind, I'll go back to defense after that hit from Smoke Monday. 
Sean, Matt Corral walked off the field after that touchdown drive. He retaped his own left ankle, then walked up and down the sideline yelling at his teammates saying, I got you. We have to stay physical and punch them in the mouth. And his grit and intensity is off the charts. If anything, this injury is bringing him out, it out of him more. If you didn't see that turned ankle and watched him in pain, you wouldn't know he was in distress. Beautiful slant and another first down. And now it's Dontario Drummond, their leading receiver, limping off as if he has a hamstring problem. Wow. That's what took Sanders out of the Tennessee game early, a hamstring. Drummond has kind of carried the load. Clearly their leading receiver in his first catch in the ball game, and he pulls up Lane. Well, Lane Kiffin thought with that group of three, Drummond, Sanders, and Mingo, they had the best group of three receivers in the country. Right now, none of them on the field for Matt Corral. John Rice Plumley has come on at receiver. Nice run after the catch by Henry Parrish and a first down to the 18 yard line. Slant route his first catch it goes right down to the ground. And you know the reason Lane said that about having those three is because it makes it very difficult to try to play man to man against Ole Miss if you have three receivers like that. Ryan Harson and Derek Mason want to try to slow the pace down a little bit. Timeout Auburn. Time for another piece of placard spray, yeah, I got whatever. Some more here. Delicious. This is the SEC on ESPN. An important game of the SEC West. Alabama is idle this weekend. Three one-loss teams, including these two, as we mentioned at the top of the telecast. Auburn in control. If it could win out, they would play in the SEC championship game in Atlanta. But a very tough schedule remaining for the Tigers, including this one with the 10th-ranked Ole Miss Rebels. Lane Kevin's team on the move again, down by 11. First and 10 at the Auburn 18. And Corral ducks down after a gain of four. One of their favorite plays, Little Reedy. They've got the option of giving it to the back on a perimeter run with a quarterback keeping it and following the pulling backside lineman. Corral made the decision to run. Out of the pistol with Henry Parrish. Corral kept the ball. The crowd thought that Parrish was dropped for a loss by Iku Liotta. But Liotta didn't realize, nor did the crowd. Parrish didn't have the ball. Great fake by Corral who got down to the 11-yard line. A big third down play in the red zone. Drummond not on the field, so his go-to receiver not out there. And they said Braylon Sanders may be in red zone situations, but we've seen very little of him. He's not out there now. Corral on two bad ankles into the end zone with a touchdown. This dude's a warrior, man. Oh, I'm telling you, he is a warrior. He wanted to throw this. It wasn't open. And he saw green grass and a lane to run. He wanted to throw it at first, but why not run? A lot of room there. And he does not look like a guy who's nursing a bad left ankle. And it's the dilemma for Lane Kiffin and for Jeff Levy, they said we are going to run Corral a lot tonight. Yeah. It might be like Tennessee. It might be 30 times. Do they still do that after the ankle injury he suffered on top of the ankle injury he already had? He ran it three times in this possession. Two of them by design. This one for a touchdown. And he's putting the team on his back again. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, Acre is fantastic. It's, it's delicious. Fantastic. I, I'm sorry hey, that he did not crop the best the man. of all the places that you've gone to so far. That was the latest. That was one of them. Here's Nehemiah Pritchett. Flag down as he crossed midfield. A couple of flags down, in fact. Thrown toward the end of the run, probably for some sort of illegal block, but it might not go all the way back. Pritchett's dangerous. He had 165 return yards return against Georgia penalty. State. Receiving team number 86. 10-yard penalty for the spot of the foul. First down. 
Luke Deal called for it. Brian Harson didn't like it. He walked all the way out to the numbers and gave the officials the wave of disgust. I thought there was a frame earlier. There's the frame, the hold on Deal as the defender was trying to make a play for the ball. Still an excellent return, but I thought they got away with the hold earlier in the play, but got the call on Deal. Two and a half minutes to go. Just one timeout for Auburn. They start from their own 31 instead of the Rebel 48 and Bigsby ahead for seven. Tonight's player spotlight brought to you by Royal Caribbean. The difference home and away for Bo Nix in his career. We should point out that the three losses here at home are all the top five teams as well. Georgia twice and Texas A&M once. So been a much better player at yeah. home. But the good news for Bo Nix and Auburn fans is you see him make another completion to Shedrick Jackson for a first down. The, the last two wins on the road have come this year. So he played well on the road against LSU. They hadn't beaten LSU in Baton Rouge since 1999, so a big win. And then at Arkansas, as I already mentioned, the best I've seen him play completely as a quarterback, another big win on the road against Arkansas. Bigsby taken down for no gain. And that was important to Bo Nix. It was the week before the LSU game that he was benched. And he said, I wanted to do everything I could to make sure I was the starter and ready to go against LSU because he knew the history. He said, I yeah. wanted to be the first quarterback to win with Auburn in Baton Rouge yeah. since 1999. Which benefits from terrific coaching from two guys who are both quarterbacks, Harson and Mike Bobo. Beautiful throw. Another first down, Demetrius Robertson inside the 35-yard line. They're in field goal range now. See, this is what I think is the biggest difference in Bo Nix. He's always had the ability to make the dramatic play, the scramble, the throw on the move, the, the crazy play. It's the routine plays, being consistent, making the routine throws and plays. That's where he's better. Throws it up for grabs. I don't think Brian Harson would have liked that. It was interesting we talked to the coach yesterday himself a quarterback in his playing days back at Boise State he said there are four things that he thinks are most important for a quarterback toughness which Nick's has in abundance preparation same thing decision making and accuracy yeah. are the other two and he said decision making with Bo Nix is still something he needs to work on the accuracy is getting better because it comes from better footwork balance timing all the yeah. things they're working on. Accuracy has more to do with your feet than your arm for a quarterback. Second and ten, final minute of the half. Another first down if they give him the forward progress, and they will. Kobe Hudson to the 21-yard line. We talked Nix about is 10 out of 12 for 135. Now Sorry, we Todd. talked about the drop passes against Georgia. They had seven, only two against Arkansas. Doing a better job hanging on the ball tonight, too. Nix. One on one coverage and the throws too long for Shedrick Jackson. Second ball. Miss defender down on the field. We've had a number of players go down tonight, including Corral, who obviously returned. I think it could be KD Hill, who's in the middle of that defense, has played very well the last two weeks. 6'1", 310-pound junior. It's kind of really given them an anchor in the middle of that defense. Again, they play a three-man defensive line with two linebackers and six defensive backs. Looking at his left knee. As they look at him, let's take a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by PlayStation. Georgia, resounding win in Jacksonville over Florida. Cincinnati pulled away late at Tulane, as we said, Alabama idle. Oklahoma, solid win. Ohio State, that's the surprise. And the big game of the day was that battle in East Lansing, won by yeah. Michigan State from 16 down to win. It's time almost for the first playoff rankings, which will come out on Tuesday night on ESPN, the college football playoff top 25 show presented by Allstate. And here are our picks. Now, this isn't who we think it'll be. This is who right. we think it should be. 
Well, and, and who we think it is right now. As we look at who are the – if we would – someone asked us, who do you think are the four best teams in college football right now as we see it, who would be the next two, that's how we are evaluating this, right? I think the perception around college football is Georgia and Alabama are the two best teams. Yeah. Now, maybe that suffered a bit when Alabama lost to Texas A&M. Well, I, I happen to still think – that they're the second best team. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I agree. I mean, even though they lost that game in College Station on the road, I think they've recovered from that and still look like the second best team to me. Kobe Hudson upended. And don't forget to go to ESPN.com slash Allstate Playoff Predictor to check out your team's chances to make the college football playoff. Third down and four. 20 seconds in the half. Bo Nix has the first down. Clock will stop till they reset the change. Auburn still has one timeout as well. They can spike it since they got the first down and save the timeout. That's what they do. 15 seconds. You still got time to take a couple shots at the end zone. Really, with the one timeout, you can do anything here. Mm -hmm. You can throw it anywhere on the field, or you can even run it if you wanted to. Remember, Ole Miss won the toss and deferred, so they will get the ball to start the third quarter. They fought their way back in this game, and touchdowns are going to determine this game, not field goals, before we're all said and done in the final 30 minutes. We want to hold the Tigers to a field goal try. Four-man rush. Wide open and a touchdown. Jarquez Hunter. His first career receiving touchdown. He has scored three on the ground during this, his freshman season. Well, Bo Nix has now thrown for one and rushed for two. And Anders Carlson kicks another extra point. Now this is great play call by Mike Bobo and design. Here's the running back, Hunter. He's going to come and stop right here. The guy who's going to get frozen is this freshman safety, Tysheem Johnson, number 27. As the back releases, he's the number three receiver on that side. The safety just gets flat-footed, and nobody picks up Hunter. Beautiful play design and call for the touchdown here right at the end of the half. Bo Nix continuing. His stretch of good play now his ninth career game with a rushing and passing touchdown. Still another half to go. You know, it's interesting. He said to us, and I saw this on film, it was really the fourth possession of the LSU game at Baton Rouge when he took him on a touchdown drive, and he said it just something changed his confidence. He said it's something he always knew he had, but he hadn't played with it. And since that time, he's played with a different edge and a different confidence. Even though they lost to Georgia, he did a lot of good things in that ball game against the number one team in the country. But LSU win on the road, number one team in the country, win on the road against Arkansas in the first half of this ball game tonight. Bo Nix has been a very solid quarterback. Good kickoff by Carlson, a touchback. Kick off your week eight NFL Sunday, 10 a.m. with a special Halloween edition of Sunday NFL Countdown on ESPN in the app. They'll take a look at some of the NFL's most unusual superstitions. And then join us Monday night for Monday Night Football, capping off week eight on ESPN, Deportes, and the app. 8 p.m. Eastern, the New York Giants off a win against Carolina last week, taking on the Kansas City Chiefs. Shocking that the Chiefs are three and four. Yeah. But dangerous. And always fun to watch. Patrick Mahomes. Will they risk something here? It's an inside handoff to Jerry and Ely. A five yard gain that'll take us to halftime. Well, Matt Corral looked like he might be done for the game and perhaps beyond return. And no sign of pain in those ankles. And Bo Nix, how about those numbers? Both 12 for 15. Wow. 
and effective in the running game when they needed to be. Here's Molly McGrath. Coach, what kind of grit did you see from Matt Corral when he returned to the game? Well, I thought we lost him there. It looked pretty bad, and so, um, you know, he's able to come back. Our defense played well for a little bit, and then, you know, we played terrible there at the end. So, you know, we got a big half to go here. We're going to have to play really well against a really good team. How does your offensive game plan change with him hobbled moving forward? I mean, we got to do whatever it takes to win, so. So it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> whatever it takes, find a way. All right, thanks, Coach. Yep. John. They will continue to run Corral if that's their best option. Auburn, 267 yards of offense in the half. They lead 28 to 17 as we send you back to the studio for the Mercedes EQ halftime report. In college football primetime presented by Subway. And this is the SEC on ESPN. Pat Dye Field, Jordan Hare Stadium. Auburn, Alabama, where the home team has a 28 to 17 lead over Ole Miss. Time for our fighting spirit moment brought to you by Modelo. And it's never been more apt than it is tonight as it applies to Matt Corral. Yeah, that was the hit by Derek Hall. He went out with the left ankle injury, came back and came back looking okay. Running the football, throwing the football, willing his team back into this ball game. Auburn scored right at the end of the half. Both quarterbacks have played very well and played with grit and toughness and leadership and I think we're in for a heck of a 30 minutes to finish this one out. Well, you noted early the comparisons the similarities between the two really remarkably alike. Yeah I mean size stature the way they play the the way they compete the way they study and prepare and, uh, and it shows up on the Onside he kick attempt and it didn't go far enough. I don't think that was an onside kick attempt. I think he just missed the okay. ball fell off the tee before he went <laughs> sure to kick it. Like it. Yeah. Officials alert to it. Where he got yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, he yeah. swung at it. He actually kicked it. After it fell off the tee. But you're allowed the mulligan. That would be a really fancy onside kick. The stats, by the way, were brought to you by PlayStation. I am going to run up to the ball. The ball is going to fall off the tee, and then I'm going to attempt an onside kick. It's getting the ball to fall off the tee. That would be the hard part on a relatively windless night here. Jerry and Ely chopped down shy of the 20-yard line. Nice play by Ladarius Tennyson. Matt Corral now 15 passing touchdowns, 10 rushing touchdowns yeah. this season. The last three SEC players to do that in the first eight games of the season. Dak Prescott, Johnny Manziel, Tim Tebow. Good company. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very good company. And, you know, he's just played at such a high level all year. He was a good quarterback last year. He's been a great quarterback this year. And then, you know, doing the things that if you talk about a guy being a Heisman candidate, Winning a game like this on the road, coming back, showing toughness, battling through injury, those are the things that matter the most in games like this down the stretch. Henry Parrish for eight yards. That's why I think Ole Miss needs to get back to a little more balance in their offense, a little better job running the football. Only 73 yards running it in that first half. And they lose a half yard there, Parrish. They've now run 22 times and thrown at 20. Colby Wooden made the tackle. Probably four down territory for Lane Kiffin, even this far in his own zone. Corral incomplete. We'll see what the analytics oh, say. I think you punt the football here. I, I just, you're having trouble stopping Auburn. I think you have to punt the football and, and flip the field a little bit and not take the chance of giving your defense a short field. Hope that the adjustments that DJ Durkin was able to make at halftime will pay off, but don't give him a short field here. Demetrius Robertson back for the punt for Mac Brown. Senior from Edina, or from Eden Prairie rather, Minnesota. Twin City suburbs. Robertson, another good 
Example of punt coverage by Ole Miss. Jared Lawrence, the long snapper, made the tackle. There's Molly McGrath. Auburn's Brian Harson said, our run game is sustaining us. He said Tank Bigsby's performance in the first half was crucial to their success, and they're going to continue doing that. His message in the locker room to Bo Nix and their offensive line, it's simple. We have to continue to commit to the run to have success and win this game. I think where they had the most success is when they were in the 12 personnel package with both tight ends in the ball game, 86 and 47. That's how they start this possession as well. Actually, they got three tight ends this time. With his new coaching staff, Nick's under center more than he's been in the past. Wide open, Luke Deal, the tight end. Or Tyler Fromm, 85, not 86. It's a first down to the 40-yard line of the Rebels. See, they got three tight ends. Ole Miss is thinking run all the way. They slip from out of the back. It fools the Ole Miss defense. The formation suggested run. The play call was a play action pass. And Bo Nix on target. His 13th completion of the ball game. For 31 yards, first catch of the game, fifth of the year for Fromm. Sophomore from Warner Robins, Georgia, Bigsby tripped up as he crossed the line of scrimmage. Fell forward for about two. Mark Robinson made the tackle. Transfer from Southeast Missouri. He transferred Ole Miss as a walk-on running back. Sat out last year as a transfer. And he got the attention of D.J. Durkin, the defense coordinator, with his athleticism and his physicality. And D.J. said to Lane, Kiffin, how about we give this guy a look on defense? And he's become one of their best defensive players. Yeah, and he's one of those guys that has changed the mentality of the defense as well. Bigsby. Leaves his way inside the 35. Chance Campbell, another tackle. That's the other guy, the other inside linebacker. Chance Campbell and Mark Robinson. This is a team that had two linebackers, Lakia Henry and Momo Sonogo, who have played a lot of ball, started a lot of games. They can't even get on the field right now because these two guys who transferred in have just made them a better defense. Third down and four. There is a flag down for that movement along the line of scrimmage. Offside, defense number seven. The five-yard penalty will result in the first half. Surprised Sam Williams didn't try to get back, though. He, he jumped and then just stayed there. Yeah, he kind of flinched back but didn't get back enough. When we talked to Lane Kiffin, you referenced it earlier about the penalties. He said, I'm not saying 10 penalties a game is okay. So we have too many penalties. They've been costly. He said, but if you're going to be a good defensive team, typically you have some penalties. Yeah. Nix just did get it off. Well, and it looked like Robertson couldn't find the ball. And Lane said he thinks there are other statistical factors that are more important than penalties. Turnover yeah. margin, and he listed off many others. Yeah, explosive plays, turnover margin, they, they are the two most telling. And I agree with that. And he said our offense has been able to overcome penalties because our players are so good. I don't think the same thing is true of their defense. I think it's harder for their defense to overcome mm -hmm. penalties because they're not quite as talented on that side of the ball. Jarquez Hunter fighting for everything. Got to the 25. It'll be third down and seven. We've played three minutes here in the third quarter. Auburn leading 28-17. Sean Shivers, who's their third down back, is in there. John Samuel Shanker, the only tight end in here at this play. A good part of the field for him. Nix swings it out and over the head of Shivers. There's a small target at five foot seven. You know, when Brian Harson talked about accuracy and footwork, this is bad footwork. He chooses to throw outside late. See, his feet are set to throw down to the middle, and he didn't see what he liked in the middle. And you see his feet were just not set and not in position to make an accurate throw on the swing pass. He's been pretty accurate tonight. That time his feet got him in trouble, and he made a bad throw. 
Well, one of the best field goal kickers in the country, Anders Carlson. His brother Daniel, tremendous kicker here at Auburn as well, is here tonight. He led the crowd in a cheer before the game, and that one's no good. Off the right, upright from 43 yards. <laughs> Daniel Carlson now with the Las Vegas Raiders. So still 28 17 in favor of Auburn. You're watching college football primetime presented by Subway. This season, along with their contributions to university's general scholarship funds for every field goal and extra point made, all state will be donating to the American Red Cross to help with disaster relief efforts. Thank you, all state. You think they'll send something? And Carlson hit the upright. It was close. <laughs> Maybe a little less than the full contribution. Jerry and Ely taken down immediately by Chandler Wooten, the safety. He's had an excellent year. The defensive coordinator, Derek Mason, quick to praise him in our conversation yesterday. Well, he's listed as a safety, but because of the injury to Owen Papo, as we look at Derek Mason, Wooten's actually had to come up and play inside linebacker. And that's that's where he's playing right now, and not alongside of Zacoby McClain. Out of the pistol, it was a pretty good hole there for Snoop Connor. It closed up quickly. Zacoby McClain, another tackle. He had 15 tackles in the win at Arkansas. He's missed a couple games with injuries. Papo's missed a couple games. That's why Wooten had to play so much linebacker. Big third and seven here for this Tiger defense. Third down and seven. Corral dodges the rush. There's a flag down. The ball is incomplete. Thrown up for grabs for Jaden Jackson. And the flag thrown where you'd expect an offensive holding call, and that's what it's going to be. I think they're going to get the right tackle. Jeremy James, number 78. Holding offense, number 78. Company will be declined. Was working on Leona, who was coming on an inside pressure and just got caught, reached out and grabbed and the incomplete pass already. So they forced a second punt on fourth down in a row for Lane Kiffin. And he had to give this guy the special teams game ball last week. Said he hated to do it because he doesn't like to use him. He doesn't want to punt. But again, he's got a. It's the smart decision to punt the football, and play a little field position right now. And that ground punted four times, including on fourth and two, and the crowd booed. Whoa, there's a muff! And it looks like Ole Miss has it. Demetrius Robertson could not catch the punt, and that's just the break. Corral and the Rebels needed. They will take over at the 29-yard line of the Auburn Tigers. Well, first of all, the punt was nearly blocked. He got it off, and then just right through the wickets. Robertson is there. Never makes a clean catch. Tylen Knight yeah, Tyler recovered. Tylen Knight was a receiver last year for Ole Miss. They moved him to defensive back. He's a great athlete and comes up with a huge special teams play right there. First turnover of the game. We mentioned these two have been among the national leaders in fewest turnovers. Low snap. Corral able to rescue it. Gave it to Henry Parrish, and he got nine. Again, Ole Miss is going with a little makeshift offensive line. Caleb Warren is at left guard. Umana, instead of being the center, is the right guard. And Bryce Ramsey is the center. Corral dropped for a one-yard loss by Zacoby McLean. Lane Kiffin said McLean's a special player. Third down and two. Now you're in two-down territory if you're Ole Miss. Corral handed it off and spinning close to the line of the game, but not making it a yard short is Parrish. A really good second effort. He was hit well behind the line. Ole Miss not even hesitating and right at the line of scrimmage to go on this fourth and one. Corral just not as much of a running threat as he typically is. They fake the run and he throws. An errant pass for the tight end, Casey Kelly. What a mess. They had a huge break on the muff punt, and they still go three and out. 
for the third time in a row. One of the rare inaccurate throws by Matt Corral. He had the tight end, Casey Kelly. We talked about footwork for Bo Nix. This is bad footwork by Matt Corral. His feet were pointed one way. He tried to throw it another way to Casey Kelly, and he threw an errant pass. He had the tight end. It would have been a first down. Bad throw. ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Subway, is brought to you by Allstate. Save money like a champion with Allstate. And we'll go back and look at this failed first fourth down. We talk about footwork, okay, and how important the footwork is. Watch as this play starts. Matt Corral is going to have an open receiver. But right here, his feet are set up to throw this way. His open receiver is there and he doesn't get the completion. We see Patrick Mahomes do that every Sunday. Aaron Rodgers can do it. Most college quarterbacks can. Tank Bigsby, neither team can get much offense going here. He's tackled after a four yard run. DeAndre Prince made the tackle. So five fourth downs tonight for Ole Miss. They've punted three times, gone for it twice. They're one for two on fourth down conversions. Well, the only game that they did not have a lot of success on fourth down was the game they lost to Alabama. They went for it five times. They converted their first two, and then the next three times in a row, they got stopped, and each time they got stopped, Alabama went and scored a touchdown and really blew the game out in the first half. Jarquez Hunter, they'll need three more on third down. That's the only loss. It was 42-21 at Tuscaloosa. They're 6-1. and one. They're in the top 10, 10 in the AP poll this week, 9 in the coaches poll. In the top 10 for the first time since the final poll of the 2015 season. Can the defense get the ball back and force an Auburn 3? Oh, missed time snap. Nobody moving except the center. And Nix tried to rescue that play, threw it up for grabs for Robertson. He couldn't run under it. Yeah. <laughs> Very lucky for Auburn that Bo Nix gathered the football. Nick Brahms, the center, snapped it before anybody was ready for it, and it was a bad snap on top of that. It was not only an early snap, it was a bad snap. And he's one of the sharpest guys in college football. I mean, even smart guys can get the snap count. 3-9 GPA when he graduated in professional flight management. They have a great program for that here. His dad is a pilot for Delta Airlines. Nick's now working on an MBA. That snap took flight a little too early. Oscar Chapman punts. Fair catch made by Jake Springer. No scoring through the first seven minutes of this third quarter. Well, this Monday, on ESPN2, when the Giants face the Chiefs on Monday Night Football, Peyton and Eli will have their alternate broadcast of the game, their unique perspective, stories, and surprise guests. Of course, last Monday night, they talked a lot about Eli's trip to Oxford, where Ole Miss retired his number 10 jersey. Just the third retired number in school history. His dad, Archie Manning's 18, Chucky Mullins, 38. The Peyton. Trying to wear a very tight Ole Miss jersey on that show. It wasn't very comfortable for him. Here's John Rice Plumley, who is currently wearing number 10, is allowed by the good yeah. graces of Eli Manning to continue wearing it through the end of the season. That jersey Peyton wore was not as tight as the helmet that he wore the first week of the Peyton Eli broadcast. That, that, was, that was painful to watch. What a nice weekend it was for the Manning family. The last name Manning painted in each end zone in Oxford on second and five play action pass Corral is a man wide open and it's a first down for Jacor Pearson well into Auburn territory they're going to mark him out at the 40 yard line and Ole Miss running quickly to the ball great protection it's a long layered route they oh, wide open it. so quickly nobody out there covering Pearson on the other side so back to back big plays and the tempo there really a problem for the Auburn Tiger defense. And one of the things we haven't mentioned yet, Jeff Levy, the offensive coordinator, he calls plays based on where bodies end up. That's why he can go so fast. 28 yard play, 23 yard play. 
And, and what I mean by that is if the receivers are on one side of the field, rather than call a play where they have to change, he calls a play or a formation to keep them on the same side of the field so they can go extra fast. Now, they might still motion or do something different, but when they want to go tempo, they're going to call the play, the next play, based on where bodies end up at the end of the previous play. Those were the two longest plays of the night. Back-to-back -back for Ole Miss, 28 and 23. Both to Jacor Pearson, senior from Fort Lauderdale, transfer from Western Kentucky. Second and 10, seven minutes to go, third quarter. Down the seam and incomplete. Trying again for Casey Kelly. The Rebels want a flag. Zacoby McLean running in coverage. Well, I thought McLean had his right hand around the receiver. I think they could have called something there. Or spoke Monday, Monday in coverage. Third down and 10. You wonder if they get nothing here, if they'll settle for a field goal. Again, the false Ooh, start. Now it's third and 15. It looked like, unlike the Auburn center, who snapped it too soon on their last possession, the center held on to it too long this time. So now you're wondering if Lane was planning to go for it on fourth down and they gave him a number of how many yards they need on fourth down. That changes now on this third down play because let's say it's three yards, you're going to go for it. That means now you've got to try to get 12 on this third down play. Yes, he said you'd always like to get the first down, but a lot of times their play calling is just to get them to that yep. distance to go where they can go for it on fourth down based on the analytics. I think you need points here, though, if you're late different. Late flag thrown on the run, Snoop Connery. He got hit hard at the 14-yard line. They're going to get the left tackle, Nick Broker, for a hold. This is a good run. It would have set up a field goal. Holding now they're going to back up again. 62. They said 62-64 is who they got. They don't have a 62 out there. This was a safe play, a good run. You kick a field goal, you're one possession down at 28-20. Now, now you got to try to get back into a decent field goal range with a throw here instead of a run. Yeah, they're on the fringe now, a field goal range at the 32. It would be a 49-yard field goal from here. Cost is long, and bear in mind, this is his first season as a true freshman, is 50. That was in Oxford against Arkansas. They faked the run. Corral is a man breaking open oh, to the pass boy, was off it. target. Dennis Jackson targeted for the first time tonight. Corral couldn't hit him. And the field goal unit is coming on. To try to get within a score. They get an eight point game. Again, how important negatively some of those penalties I mean if he makes this it, it all is forgiven and you're one possession behind but you put extra pressure now on this freshman kicker because of the backward penalties one for one tonight eight for ten for the year has the leg to get it from here there's a very light breeze at his back really shouldn't be a factor and he drives the hook through Low hook. You like when you hit those off the tee, they tend to run down the fairway. That one ran into the net. So it's a one score game. Those are the first points of the third quarter. Six and a half to go. dude was rumbling, bumbling, yes, stumbling. Yes, he was. They weren't going to catch him. He could have gone a lot longer and not have been caught. One score game here. Nehemiah Pritchett brings back the Costa kickoff. Flags broke from way out near midfield. Two of them, in fact. It seems like every kickoff return, we've got a penalty. Thirty-yard return. But that could be coming back. Ole Miss has been penalized six times before this flag, which is probably against Auburn. Holding, holding, receiving team number 22. 
10 yard penalty for the spot of the foul. First down. Fourth flag on Brian Harson's team. It was interesting to talk to him yesterday how comfortable he is here. You know, it seemed like an interesting move. Yep. Grew up in Boise, played at Boise State, was the head coach at Boise State. They loved living there. He said, my wife Kess and I and our three kids, we knew what we were leaving. Yeah. said, but it was as much as anything about the chance to compete at the highest level. The SEC, he believes, is the highest level of college football. They said, not just come to hope to have a chance, yeah. to come and win championships, SEC championships, national titles. As he said, it's been proven it can be done here. Well, and I think when he said where you can have a chance, it's about resources, it's about facilities, it's about recruiting base, and they have all that here at Auburn. You, you can win at the highest level in this league and recruit at the highest level in this league here at Auburn. And I think from a, that's professionally, I think from a personal standpoint, he's a very heavy family-oriented guy, and, and the feel here at Auburn in this community is very family-oriented as well. To the 14-yard completion to Kobe Hudson, Jarquez Hunter tripped up by Jake Springer. And we saw the video from last night, the Harson family at the Auburn High School game cheering on Davis, Brian and Kess Harson's son, and Brian told us yesterday, my family loves it here. That's a big move. He's still a young man, just 44 years old. Yep. Bo Nix and Shanker breaking open. Actually had the receiver deeper cutting open as well. Javarius Johnson got the pass off target. This is good work in the pocket by Bo Nix. Good footwork. He's got the double post working. Could have gone either way. Just kind of threw it in between them. You know, it, it was too far for Shanker and too short for Johnson. And Auburn, after 28 points in the first half, has done next to nothing on offense here in the third quarter. Crowd booing as Cedric Johnson goes down with an apparent cramp. Sophomore from Mobile, Alabama, one of 16 Rebels playing in his home state here in Alabama tonight. And while they take a look at Cedric, here's Matt Barry. Well, that'd be a big win for Mike Leach and Mississippi State. They can hang on and win that one. Kentucky yeah. playing really good football. And they'd quietly be five and three. Yeah. Mississippi State. Johnson now. Just just don't give him any candy corn for Halloween. I was just going to say he, that. He He's going like to go out and celebrate corn. with a lot of candy, but not <laughs> candy corn. Right. Anything but candy corn. He gives a very interesting interview. Oh, Post-game interviews with him are... Must watch TV. So here's third down and nine. I don't think that was intentionally trying to slow down Auburn because the offense hasn't been in any rhythm at all. Davius Robinson comes in to take his place. Nicks over the middle and broken up. Yeah, Intended for Cedric Jackson. Well covered by Dean Leonard, one of the three Canadians. He's from Calgary. On this Ole Miss team, they have more players from Canada than any SEC team. You know, Terrell Buckley, who is a great quarter uh, cornerback in college at Florida State, Green Bay, he's the cornerback coach here. I asked him before the game, who's your best guy? He says, 24. I mean, he's from Canada. He's still learning how to play, but each week he gets better. He has a chance to be really special. So a missed field goal and now three punts here in the third quarter for Auburn. Another good punt by Oscar Chapman. Too good, all the way into the end zone. There's another Australian. Tuesday, the first exclusive reveal of the college football playoff top 25 rankings. Reese and the team will have the breakdown from top to bottom, reaction from coaches, a live interview with Gary Barta, who's the chairman of the committee. His team has hit a rough patch after a great start. Iowa lost again today. 
at Wisconsin. That show comes your way Tuesday night, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN and the app. No doubt George is going to be number yeah. one. Yeah, no doubt. It'll get interesting thereafter. Interesting to me to see where they have Cincinnati. Yeah. The last two weeks, a little bit lackluster. I mean, wins, but not stylish wins. Henry Parrish in what is now a one-score game. They've twice trailed by 11 points tonight, have the Rebels. Smoke Monday stopped him, but they got six on first down. Still under 100 yards rushing for Ole Miss. So Auburn doing a pretty solid job defensively against this powerful Ole Miss run game. Coming into the game, 263 yards a game, best in the SEC, third in the country behind a couple triple option military schools. Looked like Monday was lined up offside. Double there pass. is a flag. This is going to be throw a it again. trick play. Corral zips one, <laughs> and after all that, it's incomplete. But it did look like Smoke Monday was up along the line of scrimmage, was offside. Drummond is, he's not good either. He's coming back out of the game. I think they had him in there for that play Offside. because that's Defense the guy they worked on it with. The five yard penalty will result in a first down. So that means none of their three receivers yeah. who Lane Kiffin raved about as the best group of three in the country, Mingo, Drummond, or Sanders available. We only remember seeing Sanders on the play, on the field for one play yeah. early in the game. So on the penalty, first and ten, five Auburn penalties now. Henry Parrish a long way before he ran into any traffic. He fought his way ahead for almost eight yards. Here's Molly McGrath. Well, Todd was right. Drummond only went in for that play. Lane Kiffin told me he wanted to do that trick play. Corral airing it out. Single coverage and incomplete. Trying to get it to Dennis wow, Jackson, and there's a flag thrown from the center of the field. Back judge and field judge are going to talk about it. It was Jalen Simpson in coverage. That Corral is extremely accurate on intermediate throws, not as accurate on the deep ball. That ball looked like it was headed to the sidelines. It was the back judge who threw it, Michael Watson. I think he might have been talked out of it by the field judge, Daniel Gatro. Because the ball's coming back to the line of scrimmage. Pass interference, offense number oh. five. Wow. Second down. Hmm. And again, Todd, this would be a ball thrown to somebody else if they had healthy receivers, not Jackson. Oh, boy. Come on. He just put his hand on him. That's not pass interference. The ball is thrown out of bounds. Pick that flag up. So it's second and 17, the seventh penalty against Ole Miss, and they operate out of the pistol with Snoop Connor, the running back. Corral has some running room, slides down. They're going to spot it where he started the slide at the 31, so they'll need 10 more. Lane Kiffin there in the background thought they might have a big play there on the deep shot. Instead, they got penalized. You can see these receivers, they're, they're, they're a little confused. It's new groups in there trying to get lined up. And they are deep down the depth chart at wide receiver, and they still make a play. It's Jacor Pearson into Auburn territory to the 44-yard line. Smoke Monday made the tackle, a gain of 26. Pearson had only nine catches all season entering tonight. Yeah, now six. They had three receivers to the field. They had Pearson alone into the boundary, and they went to the single receiver. And, and now, all of a sudden, Jacor Pearson is the go-to guy for Matt Corral. Jalen Simpson apparently has a cramp, starting corner. Sophomore from Brunswick, Georgia. Working the short side of the field, working against the best cover guy that Auburn has. Roger McCreary is an elite cover corner, can play boundary or field, and that time Pearson beat him, and Matt Corral got him the football. 
McCreary had a big game in the win in Oxford last year, had an interception in the end zone, also snuffed out a fake field goal attempt, made the tackle on that play. He's an outstanding player, but that time Pearson got the better of that matchup. Little guy, 5'8", 190, but having a career night. That's 109 yards receiving now on six catches. He had nine catches all year for 84 yards. Never had more than 27 yards receiving in a game. But they are stepping up to help Matt Corral, who goes for another play action pass, pulls it down and runs, slides after it seemed he crossed the line to make, although they're going to mark short. it back. Yeah, just short. At the 34 yard line. Smart by Matt Corral. We've seen him lower his shoulder and fight for extra yards, but he needs to stay in the football game and stay upright. That's why he's sliding in the middle of the field right now. Snoop Connor, patient run, first down. Well, both coaching staffs thought Corral would run the ball on design runs much more often than he has tonight. But with two bad ankles now, that part of the playbook is certainly limited for Lane Kiffin and Jeff Lebby. Nice mix of run and pass on this drive. They need eight to tie. Corral in a crowd threw it away. Good coverage downfield by Auburn. He had enough time to make an initial read and throw. Nowhere to go with the football and smartly threw it away. Out of bounds. John Rice Plumley is getting a lot of reps, again, because of the injury situation at wide receiver. He's usually a spot guy in there. He's playing significant reps right now in the second half. I wonder if they could get the ball to him on some sort of handoff or short pass. We've seen when he played quarterback, he can really run. Second and 10, over the middle, Casey Kelly. First down, 16-yard line. Their coaches raved about Kelly, tore an ACL skiing in January. They didn't think that happened back this year. He was back by week four. Auburn looks lined up offside. Too hot to handle, a little too high for John Rice Plumley. The former starting quarterback, but with the coaching change, Matt Corral beat out Plumley for the starting quarterback job, and John has made the transition to wide receiver. A terrific athlete, also was a part of the Ole Miss baseball team. As is Jerry and Ely. He didn't play baseball this past year. He had a shoulder surgery, which actually gave Plumley more playing time on the diamond. Parrish might be one of those play calls Todd, that we talked about, designed to get Lane Kiffin closer to yep. the distance he needs to be to go for it on fourth down. Third down and six. They're on the 12 and a half. Corral zips it into traffic, incomplete. Not many big targets down there in the red zone. That's Pearson. Well, 113 to go third quarter. It's fourth down and a long sixth, and they're going to go for this. Yeah, the only thing that's tough on going for it is he just doesn't have his normal guys out there. I mean, so Casey Kelly maybe is the most reliable target that he has on the field right now, and he's right here. It's a small group out there. Is it a design run? It's a timeout first by Auburn. Auburn snap. Timeout, Auburn. You saw the frustration in Lane Kiffin. I think he thought they had something on that play. I wonder if Lane will change his mind here and settle for three points. Again, we got a whole quarter of football to play. It is a one possession game. Looks like he still wants to go for it. But you know, again, you don't have Drummond. Even that last play that missed on third down, the concept was good. The route was open, but you could tell that uh, Pearson just wasn't comfortable running that route. He just didn't get to a stationary spot. So now you got fourth down. It's significant yardage. Who do you go to? I think it's Casey Kelly is maybe you got to do something to have him in the, in the mix here. No Braylon Sanders, no Dontario Drummond, bigger targets. Their best receivers, Jonathan Mingo, not even on the trip. But even depleted, he's still going to go for it. Don't know what the book says, but Lane Kiffin 
described going over the book. He said, yeah. sometimes I will go for it if it's a little beyond what the analytics book says we should do. This might be one of those instances. They faked it to Plumley. Corral had to throw it and threw it out of the back of the end zone. Now, this is a bust. Colby Wooden who applied the pressure. This is a bust up front. Colby Wooden just, just came untouched. He lined up in the defensive line. Here he is right here. Nobody's going to block him. And he is right into the lap of Matt Corral. I mean, you just can't whiff on that play and miss that block. And Matt Corral didn't even have time to set his feet and make any semblance of a good throw. Nice pressure by Colby Wood, but nobody blocked him either. Well, Lane Kiffin yelling, that's two. Not exactly sure what he's upset about that, in his opinion, has happened twice and didn't go their way. Neither team can find offense here in the third quarter. Bo Nix on target to Shedrick Jackson. Chopped down by Tylen Knight. It's a first down. On a gain of 14. And Nix again under center. Something he had done very little in his football career prior to this year. Bigsby. Tank Bigsby to midfield. Really nice blocking by the left side. Bigsby hits the hole and shows the acceleration. Breaks out of the tackle of A.J. Finley. Bigsby up to 124 yards after a 24-yard gain. He planted his leg awkwardly, went down. Fortunately, he's not hurt. Stuck a foot in the ground. It did rain here. A little sprinkle earlier today. We've had a little light rain during the game. There are some chunks of this beautiful field starting to come up. A lot of chances for Lane Kiffin to be closer than the eight points by which his team trails as we go to the fourth. All right, Matt, at least 15 minutes to go here. Auburn leading 28-20 as we go to the fourth quarter. They have it second and 11 from just shy of midfield. Bo Nix on the rollout. John Samuel Shanker chopped down in the open field to the 46-yard line. Good tackle by Tylen Knight. Yeah, this old Miss defense looked like they were going to get run out of Jordan Hare in the second quarter. They really settled down. I mean, they played much better, had a good third quarter. D.J. Durkin's team with another third down opportunity here. Again, it's not a dominant defense, but compared to what they've been the last few years, it's a much more physical defense, a much improved defense. Getting after the quarterback, they have not taken the ball away, but that's something they've done well all year. Auburn three out of eight on third down, just a three-man rush. And Nix throws to the sideline. It's caught and out of bounds. Where are they going to mark it? First, the officials stopped. Back by that black line. DJ Dirk in the defense. Sure what they're, you mark the ball back here. Now they're moving it four yards ahead. And that could be huge. That could be the difference between going for it and not going for it. Did he step out of bounds after the catch? There, you know, no. I think that's where they first said he went out. That's when they first blew the whistle. I think they felt he stepped out of bounds. But forward progress gives them this at fourth and two. Auburn going. Will they snap it? Yes, they will. Straight ahead. Jarquez Hunter has the first down. DJ Durkin still hot. And they shouldn't have given him forward progress. He bounced off the hit, stayed on his feet, circled back, kept running. Yeah, I, 
I don't get it. Of course, that's a rule that I have trouble understanding all the time anyway, the forward progress. Well, we'll bring in Matt Austin on that one in a moment, maybe have another look at it, because that was a big play. 39-yard line now. They're getting close to field goal range, which would put it back to a two-score game. They want a touchdown. It's Kobe Hudson inside the 15. Good protection, play action pass, three-man route. Hudson on the deep in route. KD Hill again down after the 24-yard completion to Hudson. You're running a guy off with your outside receiver. Hudson's running the in from the slot. Really well done. And that's, again, that's the play that Bo Nix in the pocket, good footwork, step and deliver the ball right on target. Let's bring in Matt Austin, go back and take a look at that third down play. And Matt, what say you? The catch made at the 42. To get well, shoved back. Coming he, he did. The receiver's coming back to catch the ball, and he shoved backwards where he stepped out of bounds. Had he just stayed on his feet, I think they would have made him get back up to his original spot. But since the pushback caused him to step out of bounds, that killed the play. It's just like him being down on the field, which you would give him the forward progress spot. So they got it right. Crowd booing as Hill walks off. Uh, another one of those situations where I don't think the crowd understands. Ole Miss does not want K.D. Hill out of the game. They're not trying to slow Auburn down. K.D. Hill, a very important cog in the middle of that Ole Miss defense. You hate to accuse anybody of uh, faking an injury, but that one looked a little suspicious live. They only have 10 guys on the field. Ole Miss has to call timeout. They don't have 11 on the field. Timeout. Go to the break. Here's Katie Hill just walking right along, looks toward the sideline, all of a sudden, oh! <laughs> Rolls down onto the ground. Tonight, SEC Football Final has you covered with all the biggest stories of the day and breakdowns of all the games. Dari Noka hosts with Gene Chizik, Chris Doring, and Benjamin Watson. After number 12, Kentucky and Mississippi State over on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. So after the Ole Miss timeout, first and 10 Auburn. At the 15-yard line, eighth play of the drive. Nick's pressure dumped it off. Short gain to the tight end, Luke Deal. Nice play by Chance Gamble, their leading tackler. Transfer from Maryland. KD Hill apparently okay back in the ball game. Not surprised. <laughs> Knicks, they like that action down by the goal line. He fumbled it out of bounds. Might have cost himself the first down. Yeah, he did. He fumbled it back, lost a couple yards. Ball Third down and about a yard and a half. Spot of the fumble for second down. I think third it's third down. down. There you go. Here's third down and two. I'd have to think here, Todd, not four down territory because no. the field goal puts you back up by two scores. They spent a lot of time in the huddle. They snap it with three. And Jarquez wow. Hunter stayed on his feet, fought hard, did not get the first down. Sam Williams stood him up and got some help as well. Tell you, the other guy that was in there was Mark Robinson, number 35. He came in there and made great contact, physical hit in the hole. And a great stand right there for Ole Miss to force the field goal attempt. It will still be a two-possession game if Auburn is able to connect here. But a field goal, much better result than a touchdown 
if you're DJ Durkin in the Ole Miss defense. Carlson doinked one off the right upright from 43. This is from 23. a 28-yard field goal attempt. Shouldn't be a problem for Carlson. Another great student. He was an academic All-American. He mentioned the professional flight management program that Nick Brahms, the center, graduated in. As did Carlson with a 3.92 GPA. Of course, you want your pilot to get the vast majority of it right, and apparently Carlson <laughs> did. And he got the field goal right as well. Especially the important parts. 28-yard field goal, back to an 11-point lead for Auburn. 10.52 to go in the loveliest village on the points. ESPN, home of the college football playoff semifinals. Friday, December 31st on ESPN. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by the Eat Fresh Refresh at Subway and in part by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. As always, a number of great looks from the progressive pylon cam tonight. What a great venue this is. One of our oh, favorite yeah. places to go. We have a great vantage point. I love it because when we come to here to do a game, we get to stay at the Auburn Hotel. We can walk to and from the game through the tailgating, through the campus. It is one of my all time favorites. 87,451 a sellout here in the 12th largest stadium in college football, Junior Stadium. So let's go back. You know, one of the things that college football is trying to get rid of is fake injuries. KD Hill, we showed you the replay. It looked like he was fine. All of a sudden he flops down onto the ground for the second time tonight. Now there was a timeout, but let's bring in Matt Austin. Even though Ole Miss used the timeout, Matt, he still has to set out a play, right? And he did not, as we're seeing right now. Yes, that is correct. In the old days, you could. They changed the rule several years ago. Uh, if you're injured, you've got to set out for at least one play no matter what happens. Timeout does not buy you back in. So he should not have been allowed back in there. Snoop Connor on first down. Picks up another first down with an 11-yard run. Out of bounds, far sideline at the 36. Ole Miss still well below their normal rushing proficiency, 141 yards now, but Matt Corral just so limited on the weapons that he has to throw the football to. He's down his top three receivers. Pearson has become his leading receiver. And they got to still hope that they can run the football because they've got three really talented backs. And he's their best rusher, their leading rusher for the year, but he's playing now on two yep. injured ankles. After he was in a lot of pain early in the game, here's a design run for him. And again, tackled around the ankle. It seems like they always find it when that's what's bothering you. He came up a yard short of the first down. That time they faked the play they ran on first down, the quick toss to Connor, and it was a quarterback keep. And Connor, their short yardage specialist, not just that, but particularly effective in that role, gets to the 48 in a first down. They're down by two scores, so they need to keep the pace up, and that's not a problem for them. I think what we might see also is that fake toss where he backs up and throws the football. I heard Luke Kiffin, uh, Lane Kiffin say at the half, he would run Corral as much as he needed to. That's a beautiful throw to Dennis Jackson, who spins his way down inside the 30 to the 27-yard line. 28-yard gain. Good pocket that time for Matt Corral. Was seven man protection kept the tight end and the running back in. And that bought Corral extra time for that crossing route. You see 81 Kelly, the tight end. Connor, a better job stepping up, taking on a linebacker. And Matt Corral, with a good pocket, able to step into this throw and get the first down. 25 yard gain, first catch of the night for Dennis Jackson.
This is the SEC on ESPN. From Jordan-Hare Stadium, Auburn, Alabama, big game in the SEC West. Matt Corral, early in the game, scrambling away from pressure. Looked like he severely injured his left ankle, went to the locker room, came back, and he has played well, despite the fact he's without his three best wide receivers. Down by 11, but on the move again after the run fake. The strike to the tight end. Casey Kelly is having a big night. On the previous play by Darius Knighton came off the field with what looked to be a pretty serious ankle injury. He turned it so significantly we don't even want to show you the replay. He did walk off and now there are two injured secondary players Zion Puckett and Smoke Monday. You know this play is is something Ole Miss does a lot. It, it starts with a great fake by Corral and an arc release by the tight end. But watch the fake right in here. That's what's going to hold these linebackers and open up that seam for the tight end. The fake holds the linebackers, and there's a nice throwing lane because of the tight end's release and the good fake. And they've hit that play two or three times tonight to Kelly for good yardage. There's the two guys that are down at the end of the play involved in the tackle on Casey Kelly. Well, that would be three members of their secondary taken out on yeah. two plays. Career night, by the way, for Casey Kelly. You wonder where do they go with the ball without yeah. Mingo, without Drummond, without Sanders. It's been Kelly, career high in catches and yards with six catches for 76 yards. Here's Matt Berry. So here are the leading receivers tonight. And bear in mind, Jacor Pearson had nine catches for the entire season coming yeah. into tonight through the first seven games. Has six tonight, career high, 109 yards. And as we mentioned for Casey Kelly, career highs in catches and yards. Yeah, Pearson not familiar with this offense or playing a lot. However, he played a lot at Western Kentucky, right? A lot of catches in three years of playing there. So uh, he's a guy who's played a lot of football. He's just been forced into action in a more significant role for this Ole Miss offense in the ballgame tonight. Well, Corral won't have the big numbers tonight in all likelihood, but this is impressive given what he's working with. Trying to escape the rush, and he did. Sets and fires into traffic. A terrible mistake. Threw back over the middle, and it's picked off by Jalen Simpson. Because he was rolling to his right, his field vision was cut in half. Simpson is going to just play it. He rolls to the right, he gets away from pressure. Now he only sees half the field. He doesn't see Simpson come from behind the play. A dangerous throw anyway, back towards the middle. That's one Matt Corral probably should have just thrown out of the back of the end zone and live to fight another day. And Lane Kiffin knows it. You just can't make that throw. And Matt Corral has not made many bad decisions. Only his second interception of the whole season. But that one incredibly costly. Just trying to do too much in that situation. First interception of the season for Jalen Simpson. Tank Bigsby. Smothered at the 24-yard line, a gain of four. So an 11-point lead and the ball in under nine minutes to go now for Auburn. Rare mistake by Corral. We showed you at the top of the telecast. His 15 touchdown to one interception ratio among the very best in the country. As you would imagine, hard to be much better than that. He also has a streak of 19 straight games with throwing a touchdown pass. That is in serious jeopardy now. Second longest in school history, Chad Kelly, 22 in a row. Cedric Johnson leading the defense on the stop of Tank Bigsby. Here's third down 
for Auburn, which has scored only three points here in the second half, but right now it's enough. Zion Puckett going to the locker room. I would expect to see some kind of pressure here from Ole Miss. D.J. Durkin, third and five, tried to make Bo Nix get rid of the football before he wants to. Big play here. Nix wide open. Sean Shivers first down fighting all the way across the 40. Where they didn't rush very aggressively and still left a wide open receiver. They played man coverage and the safety Otis Reese was responsible for the back but the ball was out so quick Otis Reese couldn't get there until the first down was easily made. See the safety trying to get to the back. By the time he got there, first down was easily converted. The excellent call by Mike Bobo. Former head coach at Colorado State. Here's Hunter for nothing. He and Brian Harson familiar with each other, in part because they coached against each other regularly when they were the head coaches at Colorado State and Boise State. And they were Offensive coordinators at Georgia for Bobo Harson at Texas. They spent time visiting each other during spring practice yeah. and compared notes. A lot of respect between those two men. And they're forming a very nice tandem here in their first year together at Auburn. Here's Kobe Hudson. And I didn't believe Mike Bobo. I didn't believe Ball Brian Harson. I should say. Ball is out. Looked like he was down. No, nope. they're, they're going to ruin it. Take away by Chance Campbell. Well, again, the two things that this Ole Miss defense has done really well this year, rush the passer and take the football away. They hadn't been successful doing that so far. I think it was DeAndre the Prince. The ball was out. Yeah, Prince is the guy who ripped the ball out. And Chance Campbell is the guy who comes up with it. The receiver was stood up. DeAndre Prince rips the ball out. Going on the field with a fumble and a change of possession. The previous play is under review. Need to look at it again. Was his knee down before the ball came out? Prince on the tackle. He's fighting for the ball. Hard to see from that angle where the ball was. There's the ball yep. coming out there, and he's still on his feet. Great play by Prince. This turnover is very likely to stand after the replay review. DeAndre Prince with the strip. Much needed takeaway by the Ole Miss defense. Second Auburn turnover there, the muff punt. Chance Campbell credited with the fumble recovery. First and 10, Ole Miss from its own 47, down by 11 points with 6.27 to go and two timeouts. Bad snap. Corral turned it into a two yard gain. Looked like perhaps he was going to hand it off to the speedy John Rice Plumley. Plumley goes in motion again. Slant caught. Pearson continues his huge night. He gets collared at the 25-yard line. First and 10, Ole Miss. Jalen Simpson, who was injured earlier, back on the field, made the tackle the gain of 26, 18 after the catch. He's very accurate on that slant route. And that one, a little bit too far out in front of Dennis Jackson. Yeah, the motion by Plumley opens that up, and then the, the nice slant route shows that number zero to the quarterback. Matt Corral throwing that slant route, probably the best route he throws. Has a strong arm for sure. Traffic at his feet. Took the check down to the tight end, Kelly. 
Out of bounds at the 20. I think they're at the point here down by two scores. If they don't get it, they, they need to kick the field. Absolutely. Goal. You need two scores. So, I mean, you want the touchdown, but you got to take points here. Parrish, two yards short of the line to make. Colby Wooden made the tackle. But because he ran on that third down play, I think he's going for it. Maybe he thinks this is the best opportunity for the touchdown, being this deep in territory, but you need two scores. You see Matt Lindsley looking at that analytics book right behind Lane. As if to say, I'm not sure that's what the book says here. Most coaches would kick and make it a one-score game. Lane isn't most coaches. Corral with flags down, up for grabs and incomplete. I would imagine he will be kicking now. I think this is a hold on the tight end, Hudson Wolf, number 87. That's going to go against Ole Miss. In which case they turn it over on downs. Yeah. Yep. He has one downfield. Offense number 81 will be declined. I mean, I get it. I get that he likes to do that. I get that he goes by the analytics, but you're two scores down. You have a chance to make it one score down again. Well, he told us a funny story about when he tried, when he was at Alabama, tried to convince Nick Saban to lean on the book a little more. And this is an example of why Nick Saban would tell him where he could throw the book. Yeah, Nick's probably done fine without leaning so heavily on the analytics book but you needed a score there yep but I think his decision making is because of the yardage they needed to make and that was Bigsby ahead for three and all the other factors that go into it the book probably said you have a 78 percent chance of making the first down and that's why he went for it again the biggest analytic to me is that you're 11 points down. I completely agree. And he said he did go against the book last week on a fourth and two when he punted where the yeah. book said go for it because he felt great about the way his defense was playing. And they played outstanding football here in the second half. Yeah, they really have. Being dominated in the first half when they gave up 28 points. Bigsby runs for a first down. And time running out on Ole Miss as we check in with Matt Barry. All right, Matt, thank you. Approaching three and a half to go. Two timeouts remaining for Ole Miss. Bigsby had another big night against the Rebels, as he did in Oxford last year. Timeout. That carry Ole gets him to 140 for this game. After he ran for 129 and two touchdowns in Oxford in a seven-point win for Auburn last year. Well, Tank Bigsby is not the biggest back or the most powerful, but he's run tough tonight. Run behind his pads, a lot of two tight end formations, power running. Offensive line is blocked well. This is an inside read. He can go anywhere he sees the crease. He shows you his vision. This one, he's just going to uh, do a nice job. It's supposed to go behind the tight ends to the right. He cuts it back and beats the unblocked defender. And then the last first down, he just ran for Tank Bigsby with fresh legs. Because they've played Shivers, because they've played Hunter, your, your lead dog on this offense right now still has fresh legs in the fourth quarter. 23 carries total. He started the season with three straight 100-yard-plus games. That was against lesser competition, the exception of Penn State in game three. But 119 against Akron, 122 against Alabama State, 102 at Penn State.
but it averaged 46 yards per game since. Nix, another first down run to the 40-yard line. And a smart decision to stay in bounds. You know, I was starting to say, right when there was that turnover, I didn't believe Brian Harson when he said Mike Bobo grew up an Auburn fan. I said, wait a minute, he grew up in Georgia, his dad a legendary high school coach, he played quarterback for the great Jim Donnan at Georgia. He said, I'm telling you, he grew up an Auburn fan. We asked Mike Bobo, he said, yes, I did. Yeah. My dad recruited some players from Auburn, and I came to the Pat Dye football camp when I was in the fourth grade and became an Auburn fan. And he was going to play at Auburn, but there were some NCAA things going on when it was time for him to decide where he was going to go, so he went to Georgia instead. But he had the evidence to prove. Yeah. But he, we didn't just have to take his word for it. Timeout after the Hunter run. That's the Pat Dye football brochure, and on the left there is Mike Bobo, yeah. circa 1988. And I think the interesting thing, too, I think he went to some Auburn games growing up. He said the first Georgia game he ever went to he was when he it. was dressed and, and on the roster. So he definitely did grow up as an Auburn fan. And, and it uh, worked out great for yeah. him because he and Jim Donnan remained very close. Jim Donnan gave him his start in coaching right after Mike was done playing. And he was involved in one of the great games in the history of the Georgia-Auburn rivalry. This was November 16th, 1996. It's too bad there's not sound up for the call of this touchdown on CBS. Bobo, who had been benched and didn't start the game, put back in the game. He hit Corey Allen for a 30-yard touchdown. As time expired to force overtime, it went four overtimes, the first overtime game in the history of the SEC. Huh. And Georgia beat the 20th-ranked Auburn Tigers 56-49. Bobo threw for 360 and two touchdowns. It's also the game where Uga jumped at an Auburn player. <laughs> Sean Shivers, the ball carrier, looks like he got another first down, and that should just about put it away. Ole Miss out of timeouts. I was here for that game. It was an interesting broadcasting crew. The analyst was Mike Mayock, now the GM of the Las Vegas Raiders. Right. And the sideline reporter was Gus Johnson, wow. legendary Fox play-by-play -play man now. Had a great call today on that Michigan-Michigan State game. going to be a key loss for Ole Miss with their hopes in the West, the SEC West, and obviously it doesn't help Corral's Heisman hopes. What an effort by Jarquez Hunter. And it looks like a little fight, perhaps some fatigue, the factor as well. A little fight has gone out of this Ole Miss defense now, worn down by these powerful runs by Bigsby and Hunter. And Auburn now over 200 yards, rushing. Bo Nix, second win now over a top 10 opponent. But I'm telling you, he is playing his best football as the Auburn quarterback. He got benched after a bad first half against Georgia State. He came back. He battled his way back. He started against LSU, led him to a win in Baton Rouge. Played well in defeat against Georgia, led him to a win at Arkansas played his best game then and played another outstanding football game today going head to head with Matt Corral of Ole Miss. Next time the huddle up. He has thrown for 279 and a touchdown on 23 out of 31. He's rushed for two touchdowns. You know what's really cool too is Mike Bobo told us I mean he knows Patrick Nix. They've known each other in coaching. Mike Bobo's son plays for Auburn High. Auburn High played Patrick Nix's team earlier in the year. It was right after that Georgia State game. And he talked to Patrick Nix after the game. He said there was no hard feelings. I'm just doing what's best for Auburn. He says, my son will be fine. He'll just keep fighting. He'll keep competing. And that's exactly what he did. And that's why Auburn is where they are right now in control of their own destiny in the SEC West. It's just them, the Tigers, and Alabama with one loss now in the SEC West as Matt Corral and Ole Miss suffers its second SEC loss. So Auburn controls its destiny, but a very tough schedule left next 
Saturday at Texas A&M. We've talked about Mississippi State playing better football. South Carolina struggling through the year, and then that could be the game for the West on November 27th, right here at Jordan-Hare Stadium when they host their rival, Alabama. Auburn never trailed in the game. They go to 6-2 and two overall. Final score, the Tigers 31, the Ole Miss Rebels 20. For Molly McGrath, Todd Blackledge, and our great crew, led by Josh Hoffman and Scott Johnson. Sean McDonough saying so long. Let's send you to Salt Lake City now. Here's Dave Fleming with Rod Gilmore and Stormy Bonatoni. ESPN thanks you for watching this presentation of the Southeastern Conference.